So I've got a bit of a dilemma because if I shoot horizontal, I can upload to YouTube and have the video I want. Um, and once we go past a minute and a half, depending on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, um, you kind of want horizontal, but vertical look better in TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, but vertical look terrible in YouTube. So if you're shooting more than a minute and a half video, I guess you shoot horizontal. So we're shooting horizontal, but let me know if you guys have a good answer to that question because I debate horizontal versus vertical every time once we go past about a minute, minute and a half. And I don't really know what the good answer to this question is. Maybe you guys have ideas. So the coolest thing about having a solar system, we got 14 kilowatts, about 15 kilowatts, is I just roll into work and charge my car and it's free. Uh, I don't pay for gas, I don't pay for oil changes, nothing breaks on Teslas. You guys can say it does, I'll say it doesn't. I've got 100,000 miles, all I've done is uh, replace wipers and everyone loves the car. Uh, I'll never drive another brand of car in my life, so that's that. So let's walk in here, we got a couple things to show you guys. Um, we spray foam three containers today, so this is a standard configuration. We've got white windows, uh, walk door on this side, window, and then window on that side. The other configuration we're kind of getting knee deep in is two windows and a door on one side. Uh, spray foam is great, but it kind of gets on everything. Um, expensive, but for me, it's the only way we want to do these. Better. The two windows and door on one side, or the standard configuration with a door and window on one other side. So here's the finished product. Let me open a door. It's a little got a little bit of light. As <clears throat> buy new containers, just get that easy. Uh, we actually convert a lot of used containers to the easy open handle. You can cut this or drill this rivet out, put a bolt in there, or you can cut the easy open handle off right here and weld the new one on. We sell these handles, they're kind of hard to get a hold of. I order them from China in, in bulk, so we've got them. SimpleShippingContainers.com Half inches average spray foam. If you Google spray, Google spray foam, they say R14. I was speaking to my architect today, and he said the recent studies that he's seen says uh, two inches of spray foam is approaching R20, if not R25. So it's serious insulation any way you stack it. Uh, we've got the best insulated containers in the market by far. And why that matters is condensation, uh, electricity usage we are putting splits on these containers plug on it we could easily just wire it for 240 that's no problem we're not saving money by wiring 120 but when we wire a container 120 the customer can li literally plug the container into an extension cord and you've got heat and air uh extra capacity for tvs uh refrigerators computers all that and you're not having to run 240. A lot of people don't have 240. And when you're sear rating on your mini splits, like 22, 23 sear, which is double the efficiency of a window unit, all that stuff really adds up and matters because you've got seven or eight amps left over for computers and other stuff that you wouldn't normally have in other configurations. So the spray foam leads to more efficiency. The mini split leads to more efficiency and it leads to convenience for the customer. Um, we could spray four inches of spray foam. I just think it's diminishing returns and that adds up to a lot more chemical for the customer. We have to pass that cost on. I don't think the customer wants to pay another thousand dollars for another inch of foam uh, to save ten dollars a year in energy costs when it's already the best insulated product on the market by far. So that's kind of where we land on all this stuff. So slight gray, slight gray. Um, this is another standard configuration. Uh, this one's gonna get beadboard on the interior finish. Um, black windows, and then this one's getting shutters. Pretty much all these are sold, I believe, except for the 
camo hunting cabin. So here's the spray foam in this one. And I did a pretty lengthy video on window installs, but we come in here, put our window right here. We leave a little reveal there for sealant. And then we case up to the window on the inside. And then these got Romex. So we are not doing surface mount electrical in several of these due to customer requests. Sur uh, Romex is cheaper and easier than surface mount. A lot of people actually prefer Romex. When I'm doing rental boxes or boxes that bolt together, I like to do surface mount for flexibility. So this hunting cabin is not sold. Uh, if you guys have ideas or suggestions, let me know. It's going to get two black 60 by 48 windows. We've got the walk door here and I've got uh, Angel, very good employee on the paint. So he was hand finishing the camo on this. And Sherwin Williams does an awesome job matching paint. But look at that. I mean, he is like match the camo pattern. It looks awesome. Uh, he spent a lot of time doing this. So I'm just I'm kind of blown away at how good it is. Just kind of a shadow where this is a little bit dirty and whatnot. So um, now our plan is four bunk beds, one here, one here one here and one here. We are, may or may not. Like I said, if you guys got ideas or anything, let me know. I actually have a customer looking for a hunting cabin, but they want a bathroom in it. So that would kind of push everything over this way. Six foot beds, you've got eight feet left over. So I guess you could uh, scrunch those together. Um, and then I think we're gonna do a storage cabinet over in the corner. I guess we'll see on that. And so uh, I'm going to go over here, uh, talk about the solar for a second. So I did a short earlier on peak shaving. So Evergy is the energy company where I live. And from 4 to 8 p.m. are peak hours. You can get charged up to 27 and a half cents a kilowatt hour during peak hours. So what you don't want to do is ever pull... If you have a solar system, you don't ever want to pull any energy during peak hours because they take your highest energy demand during peak hours and they basically calculate your rate for the entire month off of that one little peak. And so it'd be a shame if you shaved the peak all month and then at the end of the month you missed one day or one hour and you pulled 20 kilowatts of power during peak hours because you're basically going to get a very stiff speeding ticket. So the idea with the solar is to peak shave, so dump excess battery power back into the grid from four to 8 p.m. And then if you have any left over, draw that overnight. And for us, we all go home at like four or five o'clock. So overnight, the only thing we have running are like parking lot lights and things like that. So we're not, we don't need much battery to get through the night. So we can take a lot of our excess battery power and these batteries will keep building up. I'll keep adding batteries. Uh, so we can charge those during the day with extra PV capacity. Sell back to the grid, they pay us a third of the rate for sell back. Um, charge batteries really quickly in the morning and then shave those peaks from four to 8 p.m. But you gotta be careful that you have the battery to do that all month. So basically what you don't wanna do is pull a lot of power from four to 8 p.m. on one day because you're gonna get a massive speeding ticket. So this is the EG4 18 KPV, uh, pretty easy to set up. Um, all went pretty smoothly. We're running about 450 volts from the PV. Uh, we've got three five kilowatt hour batteries right now. We're gonna end up with probably two racks of these. Um, the idea is not to get totally off grid, but to the point to where we don't have any energy bill at all. And we've got about 15 kilowatt of solar total. So if you guys got question, questions on the solar stuff, let me know. Um, we actually had a grow watt inverter and switch to the EG4 for a few different reasons. But uh, so, yeah, if you got questions on that, let me know. And then uh, if you got questions on windows or mini splits or anything else, yes, there was one more thing I was going to cover with you guys. So there's a Nylog sealant. When you install a mini split, 
and I've talked to a couple HVAC guys about this. We've had a few mini splits leak. And in discussions with him, what you want to do is get this nylog gasket and thread sealant. And you want to put that on the threads of your mini split line fittings right here. Tab on the compression fitting where it goes together. Uh, but when the weather changes or when it turns cooler, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to relate to this with mini splits. Uh, we got a few service calls with, hey, you know, the mini split's not heating. So when those copper lines contract in cool weather, a uh, little just uh, place where the fittings don't quite fit together perfectly, when the cool weather kicks in, you are going to get a possible little and this is where the nylog comes in and you'd feel comfortable with and put the nylog on there and that's pretty much fixes that but I... uh, HVAC companies are getting from DIYers putting mini splits in because uh, I feel like we do a pretty good job putting these in uh, pretty detail oriented and uh, we've still had a couple leaks so that's kind of the information I've gathered on mini splits, but they are so much superior to a window unit or a PTAC that we aren't going to use anything else. So that's it for now. Uh, you guys have a good weekend. And thanks for watching.